Okay, the reason I thought this was interesting, Steve, is because um, the president's calling it fake news, but it is actually interesting that somebody very close to him said in June, which is also what has been reported um, when, all, when all this was happening, the president was, in fact, thinking of doing this. Well, the president has the right to consider all of his options at all times and certainly consider the best way to go. He's made it very clear that he's not filing, ro firing Robert Mueller. However, this is just inside the Beltway stuff. I mean, the American people, I don't believe, really care about this. What they care about is that the stock market just blew, just blew past 26,500 on the way to new record highs. Unemployment is hitting record low. That's what really matters to the country. This other stuff is entertaining, but I think the president knows what the right thing is to do to keep the economy growing and keep stability for this country. Steve, you know a lot about elections and things like that. Do you think that that's true, that Americans don't care about this? And even if they don't care about it, I mean, in the end, some things matter even when people don't care about yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, I think they do care about it. Yeah. I don't think it's the most important issue going on in the country right now. It could be. It could be. I think it'll be a question whether Robert Mueller finds something or doesn't. And that's mm -hmm. really going to be the ultimate answer. I think it's really a big deal when the President of the United States considers firing the special counsel who's investigating him. It's potentially obstruction of justice. And, right. you know, but again, either Robert Mueller's going to find that out or not. Right. Yeah. But when you're I, 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 don't, I don't think they care about the it. vacillations back and forth. I really don't. But I yeah. wouldn't also Ooh. underestimate the sophistication of the American voter. And I think if he did fire him, that would be a matter of discussion all uh, at, uh, you know, dinner tables all over the country. Sure. Because that, that because you're right. Just because it's not something that's top of mind right now doesn't mean that it won't be. But, but also, but I, 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 hold, on, hold on, yes. just hold on a second. I want to get Doug in this yeah. for a second. It, it's, it's not just whether the people care about it. It's also the fact that Mueller is potentially looking at obstruction of justice. And this would be probably another piece in that puzzle, right? That if, if he, in fact, was, again, trying to fire somebody who's investigating him, it could potentially suggest he's trying to obstruct justice. Sure, and, and that ultimately is important, even if it's not on the top of people's minds right now. And it's, I think, why you saw in these reports that Don McGahn, the White House counsel, full disclosure, is a very good friend of mine, uh, has said that he, he would have resigned or, or told the president, right. I will resign if you do this. Yeah. That's how very serious this is. And everything seems to move forward in that direction, which is a problem for the White House. And the story's been out there now for almost 24 hours. And the White House hasn't denied it, which exactly. suggests that there may be another That's layer of truth. Point. Is but yeah. the other part of this, and I looked at the Steve, Steve Ruddy clip, I, I think should be troubling to to a lot of people who are fans of this administration. Is if you are a cabinet secretary, you have a sword of Damocles over your head every day, and that makes it harder for whichever cabinet secretary you like to pick one at random. Let's say the Attorney General to do his job and do those things that you would like to see him do, those priorities for the administration, because he's under the threat of being fired absolutely every day. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, you're saying that the president has a right to do this, but doesn't the president also have... Shouldn't there be people holding the president accountable, I guess is the question. At some point, if you're innocent, why don't you just let it run its course? Why does he need to fire, try to fire everybody or try to pressure people to be loyal to him? He seems to be letting him? it run its course. He's offered to testify, and, and uh, they've been interviewing, what, over 21... Uh, staff people from the White House. I mean, the, the investigation is going on and on and on, and people are becoming frustrated with the fact that it's going on and on and on, and how much longer is it going to go on before it's no longer productive? And when does a probe, a probe denotes like a very narrow suggested investigation as opposed to a wide net? Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I think there, there is a point here to be made that you could say the process worked, right? That the president wanted to do this, the chief of staff said, whoa, 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 hold on, this is not a good idea, and then the he ended up not firing him. Well, I mean, that's see. another way of looking at it, right? I think the political consequence of this is yeah. people thought Donald Trump was going to come to Washington and do certain things. And it, if he was only talking about the economy and fixing the economy, he might be doing pretty well. But the reality is that we have this constant drumbeat, most of which is started by him and right. his actions and his tweeting about his actions and his tweeting about things that don't matter, like Hillary Clinton at yeah. this point in the 2016 election. So he's not delivering any message on the economy. Right. People don't hear his economic message. Mm -hmm. and the, the first great. Friday of every month is a great opportunity for Donald Trump to talk about growing jobs, growing the stock market. But instead, before 8.30, when the numbers come out, he's tweeted something that means that we don't talk about the good economic news that we're having. Well, I mean, look what happened after tax reform. I mean, he, he, he barely talked about tax reform because something else blew up, because he ended up, and he can't let it go and he can't let this russia investigation run its course because he can't stop talking about it and you know firing almost trying to fire the special counsel i mean it, it just it, it, it's his fixation with this that also makes it all the more fascinating frankly for us in the press right.
He just told the whole world at Davos this morning that America is open for business and the market goes through the roof. We're seeing massive investment in America's pr production into companies, into businesses like we haven't seen probably in my lifetime. And you know what? The millennial generation for the first time ever is going to see what 4% GDP growth were, were, growth means. Oh, man, means. the millennials are really waiting for that. <laughs> oh, well, they, they're going to love it when they say it. But they're not that's great. Trump that's great. Do that you know all day, waiting. every day, and the president's they're in a much better position. Much. If he does exactly what you just talked about, all day, every day, yeah. he's in a much stronger position moving to the midterms and uh, three instead, years Instead, he got on Air Force One and immediately tweeted about crying Chuck Schumer. Right, right. Okay, so, all right, everybody, uh, though, stay, stay right where you are. We'll be coming right back. Um, the White House has released a plan for immigration reform, but is, it an, is that outline more a wish list than realistic? Our panel weighs in next. Statements U.S. President Donald Trump has made about immigration reform, and now the White House has released a framework for what it would like to see in a bipartisan bill when Congress debates the issue next week. But the details of Trump's administration wish list are angering some lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. The panel is back. Uh, Jackie, I want to start with you. They only have a couple weeks to reach a deal, and the president's now come out with this new plan. So there are, about, there are four pillars to this plan. There is the money, the $25 billion for the wall, and then there are 1.8 million uh, immigrants that are currently here illegally that will get some kind of status, right. um, be it DACA or DACA-like uh, immigrants. Now, the other two pillars, uh, Democrats have kind of resolved themselves to paying for a wall, mm -hmm. wall, um, yeah. and uh, some Republicans, especially moderate Republicans, were are fine with letting the DACA kids stay. Now, the other two pillars are where we start to run into problems. The ending so-called chain migration, which mm -hmm. is when someone can bring in their family members, mm -hmm. um, and keeping it only to the nuclear family. And um, the other piece, which is the visa lottery. They want to limit that severely. I think they want to end it entirely. And that's right. where Democrats are saying, this is a non-starter. We're not doing this. So, that, so, And so they kind of have them in a fix where they're saying, you want to save these dreamers? Okay, let us reform not only illegal immigration, legal immigration. Hmm, interesting. And, and what's, what, what's your reaction to this? I mean, how do you think the base sees this? I, I think this is the most sweeping potential change for immigration policies in, in what, over 40 or 50 years, and the mm -hmm. president is on the verge of pulling off something quite historic. He's going to have to be very concerned about his own base because the idea of amnesty is not going to go well. Residency, that's one thing, but the idea of turning one... I don't understand how it went from 800,000 to 1.8 million. That hasn't quite been answered yet. Maybe that's a negotiable item. But I, I, I believe that the Trump base, the Trump supporters, look at this as a negotiating tactic. He's let this out to put on the table to discuss, and we're moving towards a deal. We'll yet to see what that deal's going to be. So it gets to the House, then does that mean that the immigration hardliners would support this, would support a path of citizenship? Not with citizenship. Or... Not, certainly not with citizenship. And I, I think to, to Steve's point, it highlights one of the problems that Republicans have here. When I worked for in House leadership, Jackie would call me about once a week asking about <laughs> some particular legislative uh, ag agenda item on immigration, and she would say, but your base is calling this amnesty. Yeah. And our base was calling it amnesty. Ted Cruz, this bill was amnesty. Anything that let, basically let illegal immigrants stay in any fashion was amnesty. Even though so we now have Donald Trump on record supporting... Means, of course it's but, not. But that's, that's okay. Don, but Donald Trump's base has now defined amnesty as something that he supports. That's a problem moving forward for, for for this bill to move forward, much less all the other negotiations with Democrats. So are we headed for another shutdown? I don't think so. I think, you know, there's a group of 20, 25 bipartisan senators who are going to come up with a deal ultimately. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be this deal that Donald Trump put on the table. It's not going to be a left-wing deal. It's going to be a deal that's bipartisan with a big group. And and. They're going to have, Donald Trump's going to have to decide, and Paul Ryan's going to have to decide, is this bipartisan deal that can get 60, 70 votes in the Senate something worth supporting? And do you think... And this is what frustrates uh, people you, in Washington. But I just want to quickly want to say also, so do you think Democrats are just, they're just going to go with helping fund the wall? I mean, it seems like a big cave to me. I, I would bet that there's no chance of any deal unless Donald Trump gets the wall. That was centerpiece of his I know, whole but I'm campaign. I just to know what Democrats Look, are going well, to Look, we're going to define yeah. the wall. Different people are going to define yeah. the wall differently. Right. I think if you can save, one, keep 1.8 million dreamers from being deported, I think it's worth doing yeah. something. It's not going to be a big, beautiful wall. And it's, Mexico's it's not, it's not, not going to be paid for yeah. by yeah. the Mexicans. Mexico's Mexican. out of the equation. It's not going to be paid totally. for by the Mexicans. <laughs> but there's a deal to be done here, and that's, I think, what frustrates people with Washington is there's a clear bipartisan deal. It's going to end up, I think, on Paul yeah. Ryan's lap, and he's going to have to decide right. do I put it up for a We only have one minute left. I want to ask you, where did this phrase chain migration come from? It used to be called family re reunification, and Republicans used to be about family values. And now suddenly wanting to have your parents live in the same country with you is chain migration. It's this kind of scary sounding word. What is that about? I think Doug knows, don't you? <laughs>
I mean, seriously. Uh, that is passing the buck, I would say. No, no I mean, I mean, it's, I just, it's, I'm, I'm mean, not trying to put anybody like on the spot. It's just like all of a sudden this kind of strange word came out. And it's supposed to sound really scary and bad. Well, it's like how they started calling DACA recipients illegal immigrants last week. It is It is all about the language. It's all about as a way to vilify something that had been accepted yeah. largely. Well, where does the term dreamer come from? Well, suddenly every illegal immigrant is a dreamer. So the dream the act. Yeah, dream. All right, well, All right. well we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> figure all this out and let everybody know. <laughs> Next time, thank you everybody for a great panel. Yeah, um, and this is day 372 of President Trump's administration. That's the State of America tonight. Check out our podcast, subscribe at Apple Podcasts or your favorite app. We'll see you back here next week.